Sports Radio. Here comes the siren. I want to go higher. Oh, my goodness. Lecter and Unbreakable Mike with you once again. Another episode of Cabin Sports Radio from the Cabin Radio Studios. How you doing, Mike? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing just fine. Excellent. You know what? Well, do you? No. We've got Jane Mooney on the show. Very good. Jane Mooney and the Western Canada Summer Games swim team has been named for Team NT. They're going to be in the studio. we got lots to talk about, actually. And we'll get into it on Cabin Sports Radio. The CSR Podcast. Cabin Sports Radio, brought to you by Sport North. Moving sport forward. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned, Jane Mooney on the show uh, a little bit later on. Head coach of the Yellowknife Polar Bear Swim Club has named the Western Canada Summer Games girls swim team for Team NT heading to, well, of course, this year's Western Canada Summer Games. And uh, we will find out. We will reveal who they are on this show. Unbreakable Mike Gibbons, welcome to Cabin Sports Radio. Glad you could join us once again. Always. You're wearing, uh, you're wearing sunglasses. Yeah, in honor of uh, Bob McCown. Bob McCown, right. Uh, who, of yes. course, uh, I, I almost said the late Bob McCown. He, he, didn't, pa- <laughs> he didn't pass on. Uh, he's just moving on no. from uh, one of the, probably the voice of sports talk, if you're talking about sports talk in Canada. Yeah. Um, and he just, just has that vintage look, right? I, I always see him. And you know all the, the Sportsnet channels nowadays because that's what people want to watch on television right. is, is radio, yes, right? of course. So yes. if you, you throw on That's what we're counting on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe we'll get a show one day. <laughs> get a camera we'll in here. <laughs> People will watch this, right? Right. Yeah. A full hour of cabin sports radio. <laughs> I'd watch it. But you know, you, you always see that look of him. He did he? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen him without sunglasses. No. Though. No, I don't think anyone has. No. I uh, I would wager. No, probably not even yeah. his own wife. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. She probably has uh, it at the dinner table. In any other circumstance, he's always got them on. But it will be weird. Like, he, the voice of sports talk radio in Canada on Sports at 590, the fan. Yeah, yeah. Toronto, Ontario. Yeah. Uh, always listen to him yeah. on the on primetime sports, driving home from from uh, school back in the day. Would have been like six six years ago now. Uh, and uh, his last show was on Friday. So um, he's moving on to bigger and better things. And I thought I'd do a little tribute. I was just kind of doing the math in my head right now. Like, I think exactly 30 years. Is it not of yeah. him uh, of him hosting primetime sports? I think, so. I, I think I read in an article uh, since 1989. Yeah, it was his first year. So yeah, man, like that's uh, that's a legacy. Yeah. Like, on, and I mean, yeah, like same thing as you. I remember, yeah, driving home listening to to Bob McCow and yeah. primetime sports, and um, I feel like he was always talking about things that I like did not care about. Yeah, I don't know. it was like he made a point almost of not talking about hockey because it was like too obvious, right? In, which, that, in that market, yeah, yeah. Which, in a way, I like. I kind of respect. Yeah, yeah. But at the at the same time, it's. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I was a little kid. I was just like, "What's with this guy?" I did a double like hockey or what? Yeah, I did a double <laughs> header when I was in Toronto last. I caught uh, a Raptors game. Uh, I believe right. they played played the Jazz, and then the next night was when they played the Jets uh, last year. When they came back from that two nothing lead, and then scored three in the third to win. That was, of course, also the game that Austin Matthews went down with that shoulder injury. Uh, but in the hotel. You know, getting fired up for the game, we had uh, Bob McCowan on, and yep. I guess it just so happened that during that one show we were watching, he did something he doesn't normally do, and that was open up the phone lines. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, right, right. I guess he doesn't yeah. do that often. He doesn't yeah. let other people talk. He doesn't like talking to people. During his show. He doesn't like people in general. He's an opinionated man, uh, <laughs> right. but hey, he'll be missed on the radio waves. He was a, a, a big part of, of radio, especially sports yeah. talk radio in Toronto and beyond. So. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, like, honestly, I don't, I don't, think, it's, uh, I don't think it's overstated to say, you know, um, for Howard Stern fans, how uh, how you know it's said that Howard Stern kind of revolutionized like FM radio in general right. and just like uh, you know commercial radio. Uh, I don't I don't think it's too much to say that Bob McGowan really kind of did the same for for sports broadcasting, yeah. at least in Canada. And not you know not necessarily in the United States. I don't think his his uh, his influence was really felt there necessarily. But mm. in Canada, I remember watching actually. I think they did. Uh, 
I think it was a 30 for 30. Okay. On Bob and Cow yeah. and, and primetime sports. And it was really interesting. Like, they, it was it was pretty nuts back in the day. Yeah. Actually. I was always a fan of his delivery. It's it's very deliberate. Yeah. I mean, he he's a big fan of using the allotted... And it, it, he has to fill long shows. Yes. And a lot of the times, it's just him. Yeah. Unless he's got someone on the yeah. phone or someone else Because he doesn't like studio. people. Again, yeah. yeah he just... But he, he might, in, <laughs> in the span of a minute, he might say... 30 words. Yeah. He's very deliberate yeah. in his delivery. Um, yeah. And it, it made it pretty nice to listen to. Yeah, very uh, very good interviewer. Mm. Yeah, uh, definitely a legend as far as uh, as far as the Canadian totally. sports broadcasting scene goes for sure. Um, all right, so yeah, you got the sunglasses on. Did you did you Instagram that little uh, I might. hashtag whatever? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I assume Bob McCown doesn't really actually have a hashtag. Maybe he probably I'll, hates that kind of thing. I'll try to get something started so we can get our own show. All right, fair enough. This will kick enough. it off. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, we have a pretty big show actually, and it's uh, and I'll be honest, we're going to be perfectly transparent with you all right now. You're listening to Cabin Sports Radio, and and you think Mike and Scott are are in the studio with you right now? I I have potentially devastating news to break to you. This mm. is a pre-recorded show. Mm. We recorded this Sunday afternoon. Yeah, and I guess Sunday evening. Yeah, it's a good reason. We're going to nitpick about it. A good reason, yeah, and, and that's the thing that I, I was, I was, I, I feel, I feel like I was letting some people down by letting this happen. But you know what? We have slow pitch. Yeah, on Monday nights, we are sports aficionados. It was going to clash with Cabin Sports Radio, and we just uh, no, we're you know? too important to our team. Uh, quite frankly, if you if you live in the north and you know, <laughs> it's absolutely true. <laughs> you wouldn't know that if you lived in the north. Mm. Um, you also know that. There's you can't you can't give up any of the summer. No, it's summer right now in Yellowknife where we are, where Cabin Sports Radio is broadcasted and Cabin Radio is located, mm. and you cannot give up a moment of summer. And thus we are uh, shirking some degree of responsibility to play slow pitch. And yeah. you know what? I don't feel bad about that, Mike. No, I don't feel. Bad I hope about Jay that. makes it out too. Jay Bear, who has his show on Monday five Absolutely. to six. Yeah, he had a quad injury the last time we were <laughs> talking to him. Yes, pulled yes, a muscle yes. in. Warm. I don't even want to say warm up while stretching, <laughs> and then reaggravated it. Uh, so we hope he's he's good. The wheel yeah. was also dealing with some yeah. some minor injuries. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a, a banged up yeah. start to the season. But we've had a week off. A slow push team. Yes, we have had a full week off. You know, players have uh, have got to go home, see their families a bit, yeah. kind of get the juices, re- regenerate a little bit. Um, and, I, and I'm expecting big things. I'm expecting big got a things. nice little home stand. For the next little while, <laughs> right. have some home cooked meals. Hopefully, that does wonders for the healing of the body. The, that's right. Uh, speaking of that, let's let's get into some actual uh, sports talk because, as I mentioned, there, we actually do have have quite a bit to talk about mm. tonight. Um, the Patrick Marlowe trade. Yeah. First of all, we are both unabashed Leafs fans. This one stands out, and I was thinking about it over the weekend. I didn't hear about it when it happened. I kind, you know, was that was at the cabin. You know, just kicking back. Getting away from it all. Yeah. You got to do that once in a while, Mike. You do. You do. You really do. And I did that. I did just that. Did not look at my phone at all. And then uh, and then I picked it up one day. You know, maybe Saturday. Can't remember what time. Lost track of time, to yeah. be frank with you. I picked up my phone. And Marlo had been traded. Yeah. P.K. Subban had been traded. Yeah. And I was like, you just, you can't take a second in this world. No. It moves so fast. That would have been a good place to get that. You probably had a, a moment for some inflection. I know, had some thoughts. Some self-reflection as you're sitting on a chair looking out Yellowknife River, what have you. Just thinking. Yeah. And there was a lot to digest. Yes. So it was a draft weekend as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. We st- do we still know what the salary cap is in the NHL? <laughs> do they? I don't know. I, don't, I, don't I think, didn't follow up on that either. I don't think the owners know. I don't think general managers know. <laughs> the media doesn't know. I don't even think Gary Bettman knows. But uh, we'll get to that. Ooh. <laughs> Do you think he knows? Um, yeah, he's just not, just just not anybody? disclosing. Maybe he's just really upset about it, and he doesn't know how to break it to the owners yet. I wonder if he got booed <laughs> during the draft. <laughs> you know what? If, if there was ever a draft that it was going to happen, that probably would have been it. The I feel G- so bad for The him. GMs just stand up, boo. Yeah. <laughs> Usually oh it's the goodness. crowd. No, yeah. this time it was the GMs. Well, they, just uh, think of when he was handing the, the cup to Petrangelo. Is there any market... I guess that would have been in Boston, so they were pretty yes. pretty better. Right. But is there any market that does like even Gary the, Bettman? Even the Mario, this is one of the remarkable things about the NHL and Gary Bettman as the commissioner, and the whole story that's unfolded as his <laughs> tenure is that 
even the markets that should cheer Gary Bettman in theory. Totally. The San Jose's, the Florida. Right. You know, if, uh, well, I mean, like, I can't remember the last time Florida would have had an opportunity, but they probably would if they were given it. Because they just don't understand yeah. that the only reason that they're there is because of Gary Bettman. Yeah. I'm thinking of like central, southern United States, like markets that probably aren't that sustainable. Uh, <laughs> we know the the rhetoric with, with Canadian hockey fans is, for whatever reason, it seems like he doesn't want to bring teams here. That's just a yeah. narrative it seems yeah. like, whether or not that's true. We love that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and But yet they're, um, you know, they're willing to... to welcome teams in Las Vegas right. or Arizona is somehow a viable market, even though there's no way it is. Um, but yeah, so you think like those markets would be all Gary Bettman because he's promoting the sport down south, but he gets booed there too. <laughs> well, and wouldn't that just be the greatest thing if the Arizona Coyotes made the NH, made like won the Stanley Cup? Say Arizona wins the Stanley yeah. Cup this year, and they're presenting the cup, and Gary Bettman walks out, and the whole crowd boos yeah. him. Yeah, can you imagine how amazing that would what? be? <laughs> like that would be the ultimate. The, the the greatest moment for any for any Canadian hockey fan, yeah. especially one in Winnipeg. Totally, it's like you are the <laughs> only reason this team yep. is there. They should have been gone oh. at least ten years ago, and they're booing yeah. you. I mean, at that point, you just drop the mic and go, "What? Like, <laughs> like what? What? What, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, what else can I do for you? Uh, if there's a bandwagon." For go- booing Gary Benton, hmm. you jumped on it, and you have no business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like, well, everyone else was doing it. Oh my God, that would be that'd be the greatest. Yeah, that would be the greatest moment in the history <laughs> of the NHL. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, getting back somehow to the Patrick Marlowe yeah. trade. Um, yeah, so the NHL draft happened. Uh, the NBA draft happened the next day. Uh, but yeah, amidst all of this. Because it's Toronto, because it's the center of the hockey universe, and we are in Canada, thus mm. hockey is number one, despite the fact that we didn't pay attention to it for the last two rounds That's of right. the NHL playoffs. The Patrick Marlowe trade is still the biggest news coming out of the Canadian sports scene right mm. now. And I think part of it, and like you said, I, w- I was at the lake, I had some time to reflect on it. I... I honestly felt like it was it was a bit of a slap in the face, and I'm interested to see. I think you read a headline uh, just earlier, just before we we started recording the show. That um, that's kind of the sentiment, a little bit like a like a bitter bittersweet. I guess that doesn't necessarily mean an insult. It's uh, like kind of he knew it had to happen, yeah. but it still you know sucks that it did happen, sort of thing. I guess the the way that it's being painted right now is he's sort of the sacrificial lamb for. Right. Yeah. Leafs management to now sign Mitch Marner. I, right. Reports coming out now are indicating that the team is close on extensions or nearing extensions with both Kasperi Kapanen and Andreas Janssen. And I think the feeling always sort of was that one of them had to go. Right. Um, and obviously, the number one priority this offseason had to be signing Mitch Marner. Mm. Hopefully, in the next, what are we today, the, the 23rd, so hopefully in the next week. Before yeah. he hits uh, right. restricted free agency, and then there's and then the, you never know. Like, yeah, yeah, someone might throw a qualifying offer, totally, and, uh, and or just like up them and just yeah. just to call their bluff, right? To put them in a bad position, someone yeah. who has like a ton of cap space for some and, reason. And if you're following it, the rhetoric has changed a little bit. It went from uh, Kyle Dubas, general manager of the Leafs, being very confident. I think he was quoted as saying, "I spend zero percent of my time thinking about offer sheets." Right, and then it went to okay, well, if someone does offer one, we have all the means necessary to counter it. It's not a problem. Right. To now, I guess they're, it's, it seems like they're apart. Mitch Marner's camp, uh, Danny Ferris's agent and, and ownership, uh, lease management group. I'm guessing in like the $2 million range. I think he right. wants Austin Matthews, John Tavares money. They're throwing it more around the $9 million range. Mark instead of eleven yeah. to eleven and a half led the team in scoring last year ninety four yeah. points. Yeah. Um, but now the rhetoric from Dubas is um, it's not a guarantee mm. that we match any offer should it be made. And maybe he's thinking because the return if someone because if it is north of um, ten million, mm. the return is huge. The the other team yeah. would sacrifice four first round picks. Yeah. Which is nothing to sneeze at. So maybe he's looking at that, and, and maybe that's his way of strong arming Marner. You don't know. Um, right. But I guess to get back to to Marlowe, the 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 thinking is that 
because the Leafs are retaining no salary in mm-hmm. sending him to the Hurricanes in addition to a conditional first-round pick right. and a seventh-round pick in exchange for a sixth-round pick, they're retaining none of his salary. He had one more year, I believe, on his deal. Yeah. Well, six, six, being between six and it was, seven million. Yeah, I think like 6.25. Six, yeah. Yeah. So that's why bittersweet, right? Like one yeah. of the, the most prominent veteran on the team who had a great relationship with Austin Matthews and yeah. Mitch Mitch Marner. Um, and so just one, I mean, go, one of the most well respected, totally. you know, uh, hockey players in the in the modern era. Yeah. Really, you know, like got kind of up there with guys like Jerome McGinley and uh, you know, like Joe Thornton. Yeah. And, uh, from that era, yeah, you know, one of the one of the one of the one of the real good guys. So maybe, um, maybe before turning it back to you, because I, I know you've got feelings on it, <laughs> I guess the one thing I'll say is maybe, like we saw Corey Perry bought out yeah. this past week, yeah. maybe from a, you know, because we talked about how bittersweet it is, you right. mentioned slap in the face, maybe by trade it's it's a little bit less so than a buyout, which yeah. maybe it has some, I don't know, shameful implications, I don't know, yeah, it yeah. shouldn't be seen as that way. Well, and, and, that, and that's kind of my thought, is like, I, I feel like I, I kind of think of it the opposite way, mm. in that... You know, if you were going to get, if you just wanted to get rid of the guy, why wouldn't you just buy him out and maybe yeah. give him the opportunity to then sign wherever he wants to go? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. And he was than, linked to L.A. Yeah. and San Jose. Yeah. I think even Arizona, he's got family back in that part of the States. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that I would necessarily feel better about this trade, per se, because, you know, just from like, from a, from just like a Leafs fan standpoint, yeah. in that... You're giving up a fir- you're giving up a first round pick to get rid of a guy because you want to get rid of him so badly. Yeah. And, and part of me is just like, is Patrick Marlowe that bad? He's got one. Like I, I could even understand again if you know if he had two years left. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure he just has one year yeah. left. Right. Did. He's not that. Yes, he's not worth the contract. And like, yeah, and I'll, I'll certainly agree that it was a bad. It was a, a bad trade in, in hindsight to take on that contract or uh, a bad signing, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, to take on that contract at the time. And and I think we all kind of thought that might be the case. Yeah. But I don't feel like he was so such a, a detriment to the team no. that you know that you needed to like find a way to to have someone just like have mercy on you and take him off your roster. Right. You know, like it just it felt so um, like David Clarkson, who actually came to mind just because yeah. he was in the news the other day. <laughs> it's like, wow, David Clarkson still writing out that contract. Oh yeah, all right. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> and you know that one where, yeah, like you know he wasn't healthy. Um, he wasn't the player he used to be, and neither is Patrick Marlowe, but he at least brought that element of the the fatherhood element to the young guys totally. like Austin Matthews and Mitch Barner. And you know, we may you know, we we may very well be past the point where they need that. Who knows? That's that's a completely intangible thing where that you can't really measure, right? But there was at least that that angle of it and that value. Like like now does does that make it worth um Holding on to him for that contract, I guess maybe not. Mm. I could I could see why you would come to that conclusion, but to me, it just it uh, it kind of feels like almost a, a situation when analytics almost go too far. I'm right. not going to say like that get it wrong, but advanced stats are almost like you're you're really just taking the kind of like human side out of it. Mm. You know, the like the empathetic side. Totally. And uh, yeah, and and to, and to a guy like Patrick Marlowe, like you know, I'm not saying David Clarkson was a, a garbage <laughs> person and an even worse hockey player yeah. or anything like that. But but a guy like Patrick Marlowe, who we you know we said is one of the most well respected guys, you know, I'd argue in like the history of the NHL, like, mm. you know, a couple uh, Olympic gold medals and um, you know a multiple a couple finals, like obviously not a Stanley Cup, but a couple finals appearances. Um, just one of those guys that everyone respects, and it yeah. just seems like a shame that this is the kind of the conclusion. Because I mean, Carolina doesn't really want him no. there. Maybe they're looking for the same type of thing. Maybe they're in, they feel like they're in a position where they could use that parental figure for one more year, and yep. they have like more than enough cap space to to take it on, right? Mm-hmm. So it makes so it makes sense for them. But yeah, ultimately that just it, it kind of struck me as like it's it's really a shame. Yeah, it is that it came to this was the conclusion of Patrick Marlowe with the Toronto Maple Leafs. It amounts to a salary dump, really. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's 
Yeah, it's one of the bigger dumps I think yeah. we've, uh, <laughs> we've seen. He obviously he lost a step in this in this past season. Yeah. I think that was and especially it was exposed in the Boston yeah. series where there were there were periods that he was borderline unplayable um, right. just because he had lost a little step. He's he's forty years old. Yeah. Um, but what I look at, he played in eighty two regular season games last year. Yeah. He had his Iron Man streak is intact. Yeah. Uh, Thirty seven points, so not a, a great deal of, of production. No. But someone I mean certainly not for the contract. No. Yeah, and, no. and we all get that, right? But someone you definitely want in your locker room. No yeah. ifs, ands, or buts about it, no question. Uh, when you mentioned David Clarkson, another name that came to mind for me was Nathan Horton. <laughs> well, right, <laughs> who, yeah, because he league. was the one that came back the other way. Yeah. Yeah. But uh so so with this Salary dump, we'll call it, and by putting Nathan Horton on the long-term injury, the LTIR, injury right. reserve, uh, they're able to free up millions of dollars, right. uh, which is what, by retaining no, none of his salary, none of uh, Marlowe's salary, that was the intent right. of management, Yeah, um, and that's why it's bittersweet. It's sad to see him go, and of all people, Marner will be the one to miss him the most, probably, yeah. but... Got to find a new place to live. That's right. Got booted. <laughs> uh, but that, that gives him enough money now. 21 out the door. <laughs> To uh, to ink Marner, so yeah. Now it it seems like it's inevitable that they'll be able to retain Marner. They just got to come to terms with the money. So we thought, yeah. you know, uh, and and it seems like Kadri's still on the block. Connor Brown yeah. probably still on the block. Right. We know that Zaitsev's going. Who's going to take that contract though? Yeah, um, remains to be seen. Yeah, but uh, you know, we thought Kapanen and Johnson were gone. One of them, anyways. And now this frees up. Millions for them to ink Marner, so, and that's that's a, that's a hundred percent the saving grace. Yes, you know, exactly. like if it's so, if it's so overwhelmingly positive for the team that you you know you can't you can't help but make that deal. It just makes sense. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, you know, I mean, I absolutely get it. It's the right decision business wise, exactly. even though it looks so unsexy. Yeah, um, you know, just from a surface where you just see what the Leafs gave up and are getting back in return. But uh, but yeah, it's just you know one of those things. It's yeah. a, one of those. It's a business, kid. Right. You know the human side is That's often right. forgotten. Yep. Absolutely. All right. We are going to take a break. Uh, we've got plenty more to talk about. I don't know if we're going to get to talk about it all, but we'll give it a shot when Cabin Sports Radio comes back. The Cabin Sports Radio podcast brought to you by Sport North, moving sport forward. Cabin Sports Radio brought to you by Sport North, moving sport forward. Once again, a little bit later on in the show, going to be joined by Jane Mooney and the Swim Club for the Western Canada Summer Games. The girls' team has been named and will be revealed later on Cabin Sports Radio. Just wanted to touch uh, one more time on that uh, on the Marlowe trade. One thing we forgot to mention that when we were talking about it before the show... Um, <laughs> That was kind of funny. Was you know, often it's very common in the NHL today to see conditional picks. Totally, and a lot of times, you know, they're they're higher round conditional picks that you often see that in in, in trades uh, these days. So, and this one was no was no different uh, as Marlowe was traded for. It was Marlowe and a first round conditional pick. And a seventh round pick in mm-hmm. exchange for a sixth round pick, and I can't remember if that sixth round pick was conditional. Frankly, I don't really I care don't because it's a sixth so. round pick. Yeah. Um, but the the first round pick, Mike, you had it. What what was it again? The condition. Yeah. The condition, uh, please. The Mike. condition, please. If Toronto's first round selection in 2020 is a top ten pick, the Hurricanes will instead right. receive a first round pick selection. In 2021. Right. And that's why I love... I always kind of just read it as a a conditional pick. Yeah. Having no idea what it meant. Right, right, right. But it's kind of cool how you can negotiate... You know, with the other half, yes, uh, and make a con- make a pick pretty much whatever you want it yeah. to be. If you go this far yeah. in the playoffs, eh, this becomes worse or <laughs> you, better. You know what? what? You know? No pick for yeah. you. Yeah, actually. So <laughs> this screw you. So I guess if if that <laughs> pick somehow is in the top ten, which I, I don't really see how the Leafs could acquire one. No, um, I mean, other than really sucking. Yeah, which... which uh, hard to see. Um, or get another yeah, one. Yeah, that would be disappointing. Yeah, very very sure. disappointing. Yeah. If you're a lottery team when you have, you know, contender expectations. Yeah. Uh, or they receive one via trade or something like that. Or right. Mitch Marner gets offer sheeted. Who knows? Um I don't see that happening either. Hmm. But um, if that were the case, yes, the the Hurricanes pick would be pushed back one year to twenty twenty one. That is that is a condition. Yeah, I guess then. Yeah, it gets kind of hairy if they like end up trading that conditional pick, and then yeah, I don't know. Let's not get into that because my head will probably explode. Right. Um, but 
yeah, essentially, we we figured, you know, this is kind of a it's it's it, it's a bit odd, quite frankly, that the Leafs would put that condition. Like again, business sense, I I get it. Mm-hmm. Yes, that that makes sense. That you you know, if you happen to be a bottom ten team, essentially next year. Then you wouldn't give up. You would want that first round pick a little sooner because apparently your team is awful now. You've ruined right. them because you've traded Patrick Marlowe. That's right. Uh, the team has fallen apart, yeah. and you really need that top. So I guess <laughs> it's, an, it's an assurance. I guess it's it like, is. If this backfires horribly, and by removing Patrick Marlowe, we just <laughs> go to poop. This team just plays Fortnite all yeah. night and like doesn't even yeah. care about hockey anymore right. because Dad's gone. So yeah. right. let's just party all night and not play. Hockey. So yeah, it's a, it's an insurance policy for the Leafs. So they would take that pick in 2020, yeah. and the Hurricanes can pick a year later. Essentially, the the we might suck clause yeah. is uh, is what we're looking. I like at. that. <laughs> plain when, language. Plain language again. Business sense, totally. But if you're a fan and you know you happen to look into that condition, which we did, it's kind of like, do you think that's possible? You know, like this I hope is not. a team that we all expect to. Perhaps advance to the second round of the mm-hmm. playoffs, let alone make the playoffs, yeah. let alone not finish in the bottom, bottom. 10 teams of the league. Uh, yeah, so uh, interesting. Yeah. I, I quite enjoyed that. Do um, not expect them to be a lottery team. I really <laughs> hope not. All right, enough about the Patrick Marlowe trade. That is done. Thank you for your service, Patrick Marlowe. Have fun in Carolina. Oh man, Justin Williams and and, uh, and Patrick Marlowe. That's uh, yeah. They're developing a bit of an old boys club, right? There. Yeah, looking harkening back to the nineteen sixty seven Leafs. Yeah, and I mean their their run was just as good, if not better, than yeah. the Leafs. So hey, hats off to cup. you. Bring back Arthur Zerbe. There you go. Away you go. <laughs> uh, another big trade in the NHL: PK Subban. Uh, of course, with the Nashville Predators, the last uh, two, three seasons now. Yeah. After the Shea Weber trade, the momentous and uh, devastating right. Shea Weber trade yeah. <laughs> from the Montreal Canadiens. Um, now traded to the New Jersey Devils. And this is kind of an interesting one, too. It's not, it is a bit of a salary dump. Obviously, PK Subban is. Uh, much more in his prime than Patrick, Patrick Marlowe is mm-hmm. at this point in his career. So obviously the uh, the Nashville Predators de- commanding a little bit more in return. Uh, so they picked up two second round picks and then two defensive prospects, which um, again is kind of interesting because we we were talking about this before too. And PK Subban really ever since they started talking about uh, trade rumors and that sort of thing, uh, you know that obviously uh, seems to like creep up during the Stanley Cup playoffs. Again, never really understood. Uh, his name has been consistently in there. And, again, not really sure. Like, they have a pretty solid defensive core. Right. I really haven't heard too much talk about them being in potential salary cap issues. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when when you have as good a defense as them, I could see that being the case. They get a little bit more in return, but still kind of feels like a salary dump. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know, we, we we see this with the the Sharks. I mean, they've got a they've got a very strong blue line now. After retaining uh, Carlson for eight more years, they of course have Burns and, and Velasic as well. And that was sort of the blueprint for the the Predators too. Like right. they had a very strong defensive core yeah. with Ryan Ellis, uh, obviously PK in the mix, um, uh, Ekholm, yeah. as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, they they have a, a good core, and that was the feeling of management that they would rather beef up their their offensive unit. The priority for them right, right now is not. The blue line, um, but uh, you know, PK did have a bit of a down year. Uh, he missed twenty, almost yep, twenty games true, of action, yeah, yeah. sixty-three games played, thirty-one points. Uh, you know, his Norris years feel like they're you know a little a little ways behind now. Yeah, he's got a little bit of. Uh, I mean, he's you know doesn't he's not in need of a comeback to right. save his career. But I mean, yeah, he's 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 been a bit quiet. Yeah, it's it's interesting to me though, and I keep coming back to the. To the salary cap, and and you mentioned you don't really know. Uh, we don't know what their their cap situation. We know that the Leafs are a team, for instance, that's up against the cap. Uh, we don't know if it's a similar situation with the Predators, but by them retaining none of PK's salary, that tells me that they're pretty wary yeah. of where that number might fall. And it kind of just blows my mind that ownership groups, management, don't know what that number is. It was projected to be in the 83 yeah, that's another thing. million yeah. dollar range, and now reports saying it could be as low as 81.5. Well, yeah. $1.5 million, like that's 
that's another contract. Yeah, you know, that's a that's a yeah. low level. Yeah, slightly. I mean, you don't want to be necessarily that up against it, but I yeah. mean, yeah, like that that can change your decision. Totally, in some cases, yeah, for sure. Um, so for whatever reason, they they felt like they had to get rid of that salary completely. Yeah. he is making nine million dollars a year, um, so that's a, a significant salary to get off yeah. the books. And they've obviously got the two defensive uh, prospects, some with NHL experience coming back, and then the two first round picks. Yeah, especially if it's a guy that. You you know, if you don't expect P.K. Subban to be your number one or your number two, and I mean, with Nashville, that's the thing. Their defensive core was so good that Roman Yossi and Ryan Ellis is yeah. like, well, yeah. P.K. Subban is is on par with those guys, but is he your, your number one, number two? And I feel like both of those guys have established themselves as a bit more reliable yeah. type of defenseman. And so that, you know, is probably exactly in answering my own question, what we were talking about off the top, as to why P.K. Subban was going to be likely the odd man out in that yeah. situation. Because, yeah, I mean, you're making $9 million a year. You, you, you're a number one defenseman. Mm-hmm. So if the, if the Nashville Predators didn't feel like they needed a third number one defenseman, right. which they essentially had, um, then it is probably time for you to look for other options yeah. for that guy. Not entirely surprising, too, when you think of the disappointing exit they had in the first round at the hands of the Stars. Yeah. Uh, lost in the second round last year to the yeah. Jets after what looked like a really promising stretch, or yeah. the beginning of one anyways, when they went to the Cup Finals and lost to the Penguins in 16-17. So two consecutive disappointing exits where yeah. they've, uh, you know, bumped out in the Stanley Cup Finals and then second round, first round. So maybe a sign uh, that they needed to shake things up. Yeah. Look at it the other way, though, um, especially with the Devils making the first round pick in this weekend's draft and getting Jack Hughes. Right. Now you inject, you've already got Taylor Hall. Yep. And there was some questions, I mean, uh, at the end of this season that um, about his future with, right. with the club. I yep. think his agent had said that he was not interested at this time in, in re-signing, especially a, a long-term contract. Yeah. But now you now you got Taylor Hall, former MVP. You've got PK added to the mix, and now you've got the, the top young talent in the league right yeah. now. And, 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 sorry, in, in this draft anyways, and, and Jack Hughes. So exciting time for Devils fans. Yeah, and I mean, suddenly two days later, if you're Taylor Hall, you got to think he's looking around himself all of a sudden and being yeah. like, all right, this, you know, yeah. things are starting to improve around here. Okay. Making moves. Yeah. Just, just missed out on a playoff berth after making last year. So hopefully they can uh, make it to the dance again. Yeah, at the very least, you bring in a, an exciting prospect. Like, you know, without, yeah. without even the PK trade, you bring in an exciting young player like Jack Hughes. Yeah. And, that could be enough to, to sway a guy. And, yeah, so, I mean, it's, he missed out on his opportunity uh, the last time with yeah. the Edmonton Oilers with a, with a hot young prospect who yeah. suddenly joined the oh, team. Got so, a, had a couple around him. Yeah, <laughs> so maybe this time he's uh, he's thinking about sticking around. But, uh, but yeah, very, very interesting the way uh, the way that shakes things up all of a sudden. All yeah. of a sudden, the, the New Jersey Devils might be worth watching yeah. again. Must which be hockey. It's, it's been a while. Yeah, but this, is, <laughs> this was the weekend we would have seen GMs wheeling and dealing, right? But yes. because they don't have that number, that probably impacted their ability to <laughs> know exactly what they could uh, yeah. move around and, and whatnot. But yeah. I'm sure it will be resolved in short order. Here. I mean, yeah, and in the case of a guy like PK, it's like, well, it's $9 million. Yeah. I don't think you've yeah. got to fret over a mil and a half yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're moving a $9 million contract yeah. out of there. Or if you have, you know, obviously more than enough room to take it on. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of, uh, of the NHL draft, yeah, that, of course, happened this past Friday. Uh, once again, though... The NBA stealing the spotlight away from the NHL when it comes to uh, the Canadian attention span, yeah. if you will. Well, I was just uh, just looking at the the list of uh, overall picks. You have to go back to 2015, the last time a Canadian was picked with the, the first overall pick in the NHL draft. You can probably guess who it is. He plays for the Edmonton Oilers. Yep. Very good hockey player. Yep. Uh, but there have been two Americans now since, Austin Matthews and, of course, Jack Hughes. And yeah. then last year we had uh, Darlene from from Sweden. Right. So this continues a four-year trend of not having a Canuck go yeah. with the uh, first overall pick. Not the case, though. Like you said, in the NBA draft, six players going uh, on draft day, including four in the first round in the top 30 selections, highlighted, of course, by R.J. Barrett, who goes to a media-crazy market in New York City uh, with the third overall pick. Some people saying he's the most complete player of this draft, and that's Mm. pretty crazy to think when someone of Zion Williamson's um, athleticism is is in a draft. But uh, RJ is a better shooter. He just doesn't have the same power and and raw athleticism, I think, as, as someone like Williamson. But, yeah, I mean, right, fresh, freshly removed from the first ever championship in Toronto, um, 
Really fun clip as well. I don't know if you got a chance to see it on the internet last night of Nick Nurse just shredding at an Arkells concert. Jumped up on stage and started playing guitar. Oh, really? He must feel like a rock star. I did uh, not see that. And uh, recently uh, named head coach of the uh, Canadian national team. So uh, he's as, having a good time. He's having a good summer. Yeah. Um, um, but, of course, good the for him. coach of the year candidates came out and he was not one of them, which... Ah. Yeah. Can't win them all. Can't win them all. I mean, and he's won. He's won a few legitimately yeah, lately. So. That's right. So uh, I think he'll be okay. A good week for Canadian basketball. Yeah, no kidding, man. That is uh, that's pretty awesome. And I mean, like you know, coming off the heels of, of course, the Raptors winning their first franchise. Does it feel real yet? The Raptors being NBA champions. I, I watched another YouTube video today. It was beautiful. <laughs> of course, you did. Recapping the previous series, like that. Yes. Unbelievable, uh, you know, victories against against Philadelphia and Milwaukee. Until they got all the way to the finals, yeah, no, it's 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 setting in a little bit more. Yeah. Oh my God, that's it's still still so. Amazing. It's pretty fresh. Um. Yeah. So. <clears throat> pardon me. All right. <laughs> um. Yeah. So very interesting and very exciting the NBA draft there. But yeah, the coming off the heels of that, uh, really cool the momentum for for Canada for Canadian basketball yeah. right now. Um. Yeah. There's there's nothing not to like about that. Yeah. Cabin. Sports Radio. Welcome back to Cabin Sports Radio, brought to you by Sport North. They are moving sport forward. We were talking about the Raptors, the NBA draft, uh, making history this past Thursday. But something that is uh, very exciting for NBA fans, particularly Toronto Raptors fans, as if they needed more excitement. You know, Mike, the, the rich just get rich. I know. It, it's really disgusting. I love it. What's going on? Well, uh, report out of Yahoo Sports today, the Toronto Raptors are the favorites to sign two-time NBA Finals MVP Kawhi Leonard in free agency. So apparently he is going to decline his 2019-2020 player option for $21.3 million to hit the open market uh, where he can make much more money. Um, and with the Raptors owning his bird rights, they can offer him more money and more of a term than any other team. Um so we knew heading into this season, this obviously was a huge risk. I think even yeah. if he walks now, Masai Ujiri's got to feel pretty good about himself bringing the first ever championship to Toronto, and obviously Kawhi Leonard played a massive part in that. So since then, you know, right after when the the celebration kind of ended, that's that's when reality set in. It's like, whoa, this this guy's going to be a free agent in two weeks' time, um, and a lot of people are going to be vying for his services. It's always felt like. It's between Toronto, who he had a great year with. They uh, respected his health uh, coming off of uh, a, a pretty serious quad injury the year prior with the San Antonio Spurs and only allowed him to play nine games. Your favorite word, load management. Uh, so the Raptors training staff. Uh, and that's, that's a phrase? Yes. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, two, two words. Um, really respected his body, and I think he really appreciated that. And, I mean, it's it's pretty hard to walk away from a, a team you've just gone all the way to the top with. Um, I thought it would come down between Toronto and the Clippers. Hearing reports that other other cities could get sit-downs with him. Uh, mm. I've heard Philadelphia, which was the one that kind of surprised me. Right. Not so surprising. Obviously, the Lakers and the Clippers are going to be in the mix. He's from San Diego. I mean, he broke their hearts. The least he could do is yeah. mend it with a championship, yeah. Mike. Like, oh, have, have a heart. The, right? the, the Sixers, you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Wow, that was... <laughs> I watched that video again today. It, it, it must have been really crushing to be oh on the other side. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Five different bounces before it went in. <laughs> yeah, that's how close they were. Again, that's how close this... they were to maybe even a championship because they, they could have given the Bucks a run for their money, the too. The most movie-like moments, oh. like, honestly. Um, and then, obviously, the, the two New York teams, the uh, New York Knicks and Brooklyn Nets. Uh, but now it sounds like, according to, to Yahoo Sports, that... Uh, Toronto would be the favorites. I think if if, if they are going to hash out a deal very similar to what we saw with the uh, Durant deals that he signed with uh, Golden State, right. probably a one and one. Um, okay. So one year, probably in the neighborhood of you know it's going to be around max money. So yeah, ugh, if, I, if I had to guess, it'd be in the thirty three, yeah, thirty five. And that's kind of like, well, that, that was what LeBron was doing in his, like, absolute yes. prime, right? He was yes. signing one years, and then it was like, we'll see where I'm going from there. Because, yeah. I mean, let's be honest, I'm LeBron James. Right. I could sign. Any, anybody would sign me to the maximum that right. they could. I'm going to explore my options. And that's like, that's sort of been the trend with the latest generation of athletes. We see it in hockey now, yeah. too, with the deal Matthews took, right? Like, yeah. betting on yourself. Yeah. You, you know you're going to be that good. Absolutely. He's, Matthews is going to hit the, the open market in his absolute prime. Yeah. Uh, and he knows that. 
Yeah. Um, the risk, obviously, like we saw with Kevin Durant, if you suffer what can be a career-altering injury, like a right. ruptured Achilles tendon, yeah. you're not. So it's a good faith measure. Yeah, we'll probably see the Warriors extend max contracts to him and Clay Thompson, yeah. both coming off of really tragic injuries. Mm. Um, so that's the risk you run from a health and security standpoint. But it gives you, as a free agent, much more flexibility. You're not locked in to a certain team for an extended period of time. So if there is something that the Raptors are going to work out with Kawhi, I see it more going that route, like a one and one where the second year would be an optional. You can opt right. in, opt out. Yeah. Um, and that gives them one more kick of the can. Um, the, the West could be wide open with all the injuries to the Warriors. We know the Lakers are going to be in the dance now. Yeah. You've beaten everyone in the East and Boston's going to get weaker. They're going to lose Kyrie and, uh, and um, Al Horford. It looks like you've already beaten the Bucks. You've already beaten the Sixers. The Sixers mm-hmm. could lose Jimmy Butler. So yeah. it makes sense. I mean, you could run the East one more time. Well, you know what? Let's start just planning the 2020 parade right now. There you go. Why waste time? Let's get three billion, three million, not billion, three million people next time. <laughs> uh, Toronto's getting worse and worse. Uh, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Uh, we are going to take one more break. And Jane Mooney and the Western Canada Summer Games girls teamed NT swim team is in the house. That is next on Cabin Sports Radio. The CSR Podcast. Team NT Swim Team in the house for the Western Canada Summer Games. Of course, at uh, this upcoming Western Canada Summer Games, not long from now, August 9th to 18th. That was off the top of my head. How was that? Uh, yeah, ninth through to the 16th. I 16th, think. okay, okay. Just getting a little ahead of myself, a little excited. Uh, that's happening in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. And last week, the Team NT Swim Team was announced, so they are in studio to introduce themselves. We have Leo Conga, Tegan Conga, Mackenzie Clark, and Matthew Dernford in the studio, as well as their coach, Jane Mooney. Welcome, uh, all of you, to Cabin Sports Radio. <coughs> Thanks. Hey. So this is, uh, Leo, you are the only returning member of the Team NT swim team from, I suppose, what was it, Western Summer Games? Or the Canada Summer Games, I guess it was? Uh, yeah, I'm the fir- I'm the only returning member from the Canada Games. Okay, so, and uh, I assume it's kind of as a result of that, you are one of the captains of this year's team. What are you looking forward to with your newfound responsibility? Uh, I'm... I really have a lot of fun helping people out through some of the stuff that they have to deal with. A lot of the things on the team is we are stuck really close to each other for a long period of time, so there's a lot of tensions, Mm. and I do really enjoy helping people just kind of get their anger in check and deal with what's buggering them. Okay, so the Canada Summer Games, was that your your first experience at a a major game? Uh, At this scale, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I've done some smaller scale stuff that's still pretty high end before that, but that was definitely my first time national. And what was that experience like? What do you feel like you took out of that that's gonna you're gonna bring forward to this year's games? It, it was crazy, and there was a lot of stuff, especially around like um, just how everything works and where you have to be at what times. It really helped, as well as how to treat your free time. I really think that's something that'll help out a lot here because it's on a relatively quick uh, time frame, right? Except for when you're on break, in which case it's basically you've got hours and hours on end to do nothing. And it really is um, night and day how different it is at times. So it can be helpful just to know that in advance. Okay. Uh, turning to your uh, your co-captain of the girls' side here, Mackenzie Clark. Mackenzie, welcome to Cabin Sports Radio, first of all. Thank and uh, congratulations on being uh, named one of the captains of the Team NT swim team. What are you looking forward to most heading into these games? Um, I'm just looking forward to hanging out with everyone. You know, it's really fun to, like, do team bonding and stuff. And, of course, win a bunch of medals. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so is this your first uh, first major games? It is, yeah. Okay, so uh, how are you feeling about that? Are you a little nervous heading uh, in? Yeah, nervous and excited. And and how old are you? Thirteen. Thirteen. Yes, we were. We were you were laughing uh, about Matthew before we uh, started doing the interview here, calling him the the elder statesman of the team. Okay. And I asked how old Matthew was, and he said uh, sixteen years old. And I was like, oh, that's. That's old now, is it? Okay. All right. So you've got uh, a few games ahead of you. Uh, what are you looking to uh, to take out of these games as far as the experience goes? Um, I don't really know, honestly. <laughs> Just kind of going to see what it brings, huh? Yeah. Okay. And how has your, uh, your swim season been? You're feeling pretty good heading into the games? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. 
lots of uh, lots of training going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Matthew, why don't we? Uh, well, we just mentioned you. You're the you're the old guy on the team. <laughs> How are you feeling about that? I'm pretty excited for it. Your first uh, major games as well as part of Team NT? Yeah, first and how, time going. And how did you get into uh, to swimming? Uh, uh, I just felt like it one day. You just felt like it? Mm-hmm. How long have you been swimming now? Uh, six years now. Six years, okay. And at what point, uh, was there a point where you were just like, you know what, this is, I, I feel like something I could do competitively, or was it maybe a coach who saw you and was like, you know, I think this is something you consider, you should consider trying to go further with? Uh, I I used to do hockey, and I quit hockey for this. That was about the time when I decided that I'm going to stick with swimming. Okay. And uh, what what made that decision? I just enjoyed swimming more. Found okay. More fun. Yeah. What what is it about the uh, about swimming that you enjoy? Is it just uh, the atmosphere? Is it the pe- the people you've met, your peers there? I uh, about all of it. Yeah. Yeah. The competitive aspect is fun. All kind of factors in there. Yeah. So this is your first games as well. This Western Canada Summer Games, right? Yeah. And what are you looking forward to for that? I'm looking forward to the experience, meeting new people, having fun down there. Same thing, just kind of taking it all in and seeing how it uh, how it goes, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right. So one more member that we haven't talked to you yet is uh, Tegan Conga, and this is really cool because uh, not often do you actually. I feel like more often in the NWT than most places, but not often do you have siblings on a national competing team. But we have got that this year with the Team NT swim team. Tegan, welcome to Cabin Sports Radio. Thank you. And uh, tell us about your Western Canada Summer Games. What are you looking forward to most? I think I'm just really excited for the team because um, we're all very good friends. So I think it'll just make everything easier and more fun. Okay. And how long have you been swimming for? Eight years. Eight years. Okay. With the swim team. Okay. So Leo is how many years older than you? 20 months. 20 months. Okay. So like pretty close. Uh, did he, you, you mentioned that he kind of got you into swimming. Is that is that true? Yeah, because, you know, like the younger sibling always wants to copy the older sibling. So. Yes. Okay. So now you want to uh, now you want to kind of uh, leapfrog him, of course, and, and be better, right? That That's naturally the way it goes with siblings? Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> and uh, same question to you. What, what are you looking forward to most at your first games? The experience. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Do you, uh, are you nervous at all heading in? Yeah, I am. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you got a really good, uh, really good leadership group ahead of you. Jane has obviously been coaching in, uh, in the NWT for so long. And, uh, you know, you've seen it, you've seen it a thousand times over by now. There's nothing that could, that could surprise your coach. So I'm sure she'll be a, uh, a wonderful helping hand. Well, congratulations to all of you, Team NT swimming team, ahead of the Western Canada Summer Games this year in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. We will be, of course, following along here at Cabin Radio and wish you all the best of luck in your training up to the games and uh, just hope for a great experience for all of you at this year's games. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming in. One more time, that was Matthew Durnford, Tegan Conga, and Captains Mackenzie Clark and Leo Conga of the Team NT swim team that will be heading to the Western Canada Summer Games in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, August 9th to 16th. Best of luck to all of them and uh, the other, I guess, seven members who were part of the Team NT swim team. Eleven members in total. That was just a taste of the team. And, of course, their coach, Jane Mooney, will be heading there with them. Looking for a uh, great experience for all of those kids. And best of luck, of course. Um, Of course, I just will say it only came to light after the recording of that interview that... uh, One or two of my questions might not have made total sense because I was not aware that you cannot compete past the age of 16 at a Western Canada or Canada summer games in swimming. But there you have it. The more you know. (laughs) But best of luck to them at this year's games. And regardless of whether or not you can compete in the sport again, it all goes into a great life experience competing at these games. Canada summer games, Western Canada summer games, Arctic winter games, Canada Winter Games, they are all 
a fantastic experience, and we wish them and all of the athletes, especially the ones representing Team NT, all of the best. By the way, uh, if you would like to get involved or know more information about this year's games, you can head to 2019wcsg.ca. That's the official website of this year's Western Canada Summer Games. Or you can always head to sportnorth.com, get in touch, and find out how you can perhaps get involved with Team NT at this year's games. That will do it for another episode of Cabin Sports Radio. No episode next Monday. Of course, it is Canada Day long weekend. We will be taking that show off, but we will talk to you again July 8th. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great long weekend, and we'll talk to you again July 8th right here on Cabin Sports Radio.